Well, you know, it, it's uh, been pretty clear since Seymour Hirsch uh, told us the story, what happened. Uh, and it's uh, pretty uh, certain uh, that nobody has responded to him in more than a year uh, that has any way contradicted what he said. Uh, you, you may remember that uh, early on I was asked uh, actually by the Russian government to testify in the UN Security Council about this uh, because Russia was calling for an independent investigation. I thought that was an excellent idea. I still do. The West rejected it. Uh, recently, Sweden said, uh, we're, we're not going to discuss anything more about this. It wasn't Swedes. <laughs> Everybody has, uh, of course, uh, uh, gone completely silent. But uh, I think President Putin was pretty accurate in, in what he said. Uh, and it it conforms with uh, with all the evidence. So uh, the, the, the whole interview was very interesting as far as I'm concerned. Uh, why? What was so? Because we read it in Russia definitely different than people uh, outside of Russia. So uh, was it really an info bomb? You know, the, the basic points uh, that uh, President Putin raised have not been discussed at all in the mainstream in the United States. And even though, again, after the interview, uh, every mainstream outlet tried to dismiss this immediately, well, this is just propaganda, it's boring, it's rambling. The fact is tens of millions of people, uh, it, it seems like uh, more than 100 million people have watched this Well, it's only on, on X, uh, now it's almost 200 million. All right. So th this is, it's, it's really significant. Uh, it it uh, is something that the U.S. government and, uh, of course, its mainstream outlets don't uh, want to Jeffrey, be just a moment. All. Sorry, Jeffrey. It turned out that uh, they have a slight problem with interpretation. Ah. Well, I'll do the job. So go ahead, please. <laughs> well, I was saying that uh, despite the fact that Я говорил, что несмотря на тот факт, что well, go ahead, I'm just interpreting. Что государство uh, as, as you point out, uh, around 200 million people have watched the interview. I found it extremely interesting. Uh, the points that I know and I know a lot of this firsthand over the last 30 years. I thought the president, uh, President Putin, was uh, very, very accurate and extremely interesting about what he said. Will it change anything? Uh, step by step. You know, uh, the the, uh, the American people are already really, uh, really uh, uh, unhappy with uh, any continued funding of the Ukraine war. The, the military industrial complex still pushes, the mainstream political leaders still push, but the public is coming to understand this step by step. And there are a lot more political voices also, especially in the Republican Party, that also listen to the interview and that are also responding. So I, I think it does make a difference. Well, we'll see, because it looks like right now there will be new finance for this war in Ukraine, and it uh, doesn't really matter, but uh, American Democrats are willing to fight against Russia till the last drop of Ukrainian soldier, or Ukrainian people as such, because now they also have pretty much women fighting against Russia and dying for nothing. Yeah, I, I made the point uh, last week that uh, uh, that this is a, a bill to kill more Ukrainians, unfortunately. It's uh, nothing other than that. It's going to be a close call because the Senate probably will support this, but it may absolutely not make it uh, through the Republican-dominated House of Representatives. So I don't think that the story is finished even on this particular round. But even uh, if there is more uh, money and it's wasted, I don't think it's going to change, change very much. The European public is sick of this war. The Ukrainians are completely exhausted. They don't have troops. Uh, they don't have the armaments. 
Uh, the United States doesn't have the uh, artillery to give. This is really a, a dreadful, uh, dr dreadful disaster. Uh, what, what President Putin made clear, which I absolutely believe, is that this is the culmination of 30 years of U.S. attempt since the early 1990s when I was uh, in directly involved. Uh, a U.S. attempt to undermine Russia, and it's it's coming to an end, uh, painfully, slowly, awfully, but uh, it is going to come to an end. This has uh, been a terrible, terrible policy. All yeah, along. but that look that, that looks really heartbreaking. You know, well, I'm definitely not one of the Biden's fan, but now when you look at this uh, poor fellow. Uh, you know, it's it's ridiculous. You know, it's humiliating for the whole world to see this guy being tortured by people surrounding him, saying that, oh, come on, you have to make yet another speech. And he doesn't realize in the where is he, what he has to say. So basically, it's painful. And uh, it's wrong because the United States uh, raise a lot of questions. Who runs the government nowadays? What's happening in, 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 in politics, as we discussed many times, but the worst thing that people that are running the United States right now, they're not accountable for anything. They can hit you with the charges of treason. They can hit uh, uh, Taki Carlson. They can do whatever they want and there will be no one, no one to respond on the proper answer. Who's in charge? Who's responsible? It, it is kind of the end of an era because it's uh, octogenarians. Uh, Mitch McConnell is is the same thing, you know. Uh, he uh, he is not well. He's not uh, in capacity. Biden is definitely not well. Uh, the Senate leaders are very old. They're very tired. Uh, this policy of the United States has been going on for thirty years plus. Actually, it's a continuation of policies that are even decades before that, but it, even since the end of the Soviet Union, this has been pretty much a continuous policy. That was, uh, I think, President Putin's uh, you know, very correct point that uh, it's not one thing. Uh, it's, it's been attempt after attempt, whether it's NATO enlargement or the missile placements or the support for the uh, Chechen rebels. It's, it was nonstop attempts to weaken Russia. But now it's being carried out by 80-year-old men with a public that doesn't want this. So it's, it's pretty interesting, actually, uh, what, what's going to happen. There's a, a huge gap between the senators still trying to push more money and the American public. And I think the interview is reaching a lot of people. And you know who else reaches a lot of people, of course, is Elon Musk. Uh, and he's very clear about that. Uh, so uh, he, he's got a very, very powerful voice inside the United States. And he's also clear this is a waste of time, waste of money and waste of lives. But Elon Musk is going to pay for this because now the, there is a committee trying to investigate where they had the right to buy uh, Twitter. So definitely they're pretty much disappointed with Elon Musk, with the fact that they allowed him to do this deal. And uh, it, it, won't, you know, it won't go away by itself. So those, yeah, uh, uh, those rushes, they work please. slowly but steadily. If I had to bet between Biden and Musk, I'll, I'll bet with Elon. <laughs> so this is, uh, <laughs> uh, I, 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 I think he'll find his way through pretty well. Yeah, but he still supports Ukraine. So in Russia, he's not beloved personality. We used to be in good terms with Elon Musk, but you know, after uh, his uh, Stalin fighting for Ukrainians and doing the whole wrong thing on uh, the front line. Uh, now, you know, it's actually interesting. He's very clear this week. Uh, this money is a waste of money. It should be stopped. It's also interesting. I don't know how much, but uh, there are a lot of Russians on the on the contact line using Starlink also, according to, to what we've seen. So it, it seems to be a business on both sides right now. Well, honestly, say not really.
Not really. Only wait, the wait, one wait, that wait. we can take from Ukrainians using Ukrainian cards that pretend to be Ukrainian uh, satellite points. So that's the, the, well, it's it's between uh, Musk and I think that's uh, the news that has been implemented by uh, Ukrainian intelligence services as disinformation. Uh -huh. Now to All hit right. Musk, I, I, I can't I can't vouch for it. But uh, what I can vouch for is that. Uh, Elon has been uh, quite clear this week. Uh, stop! Stop the money! Uh, it's uh, it's really just killing killing young Ukrainians, which yeah. is which is Plus, really the core point. It's weird that in the United States they don't see the fact Ukrainians are not willing to fight for this country. A lot of they them fled care. Ukraine. They don't care. This is a long project that has nothing, especially to do with Ukraine. It has all to do with Russia. Uh, and as uh, long as someone's uh, ready to take uh, the, the weapons and go to the front line and try to kill Russians, uh, they're going to continue to do it. This this long standing project, it's failed. Uh, President Putin called their bluff. He understood the game. It's failed. Uh, I was quite sure it was going to fail from the start. I said this was the, the final neocon debacle. I think we're at the end of a 30-year cycle, frankly, I, which is, uh, uh, has, been, has been a disaster for America. Yeah, but the question is how bloody this end will be and who's going to well, run the country. You know, Trump is, so, is also not a young boy. You know, <laughs> it, 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 thing, things drag on for a long time. That's, that's America's bad habit. Uh, our wars uh, drag on. Even after they're finished, they drag on. Uh, this is, uh, you know, what we've seen from Vietnam onwards. Uh, getting America to fold a losing hand uh, can be a long process, but um, the faster the better as far as I'm concerned, because this has been nothing but a, a set of blunders, uh, and, uh, and there, there's no way out other than, my God, to start talking and negotiating and uh, exactly. No, we we came back to the said. same question that we discussed for almost a year. No one to discuss with, no one to negotiate well, with. It, it may be literally right now that there's no one to negotiate with because I'm not sure we have uh, uh, on the other side someone to negotiate with. It's uh, it's a little bit alarming, but on the other hand, you know, we could we could find someone uh, to uh, to hold these discussions because it's the American interest, the Russian interest, and in, in yeah, like, like whom. Interest. You look, there is I, nothing, there is nothing America can do between Israel and Palestine. Zero understanding what to do with China and Taiwan. So basically, I, America has zero solutions for major world problems. The problem is that the United States forgot diplomacy, so they don't know how to talk to other governments. Uh, this is uh, really the... the the consistent problem, the idea has been subversion and war is enough. We get to choose who governs. We get to decide how it's going to go. We'll fight if necessary. That's good for the military industrial complex. We don't have to have diplomacy. So exactly in the areas you're discussing in the Middle East, no diplomacy. It's, it's what Israel wants. It's led to complete disaster with China. They basically turned off diplomacy. Uh, many years ago, and uh, aside from a few sporadic contacts, there's no serious diplomacy with China. Uh, and uh, with Ukraine, we, we see what it is. And it, President Putin made it clear. I've, I've been asking all along, has there been one discussion between Biden and Putin? The answer is no. It's, it's unbelievable. It but really also is unbelievable. Yeah, but also what Putin did, uh, he actually completely destroyed Western image of him uh, as a dictator with uh, also a madman who is willing to kill the whole world, a person not to talk to. Putin is extremely reasonable, very calm, uh, in great physical shape, definitely not the image that the West has been trying to build for almost two years. Putin. So, so, so what could the media say? They, they say exactly. he's boring. He's rambling. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. No, 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 but exactly the, the fact of the matter is they cannot take on the basic points. No serious discussion. This is uh, rather alarming uh, because 
th- this is the U.S. scene right now, which is no serious discussion of serious issues. Not only with states, but also with Europe, as Putin mentioned, whom to talk to. Whom yeah, to talk to? Yeah, it's quite interesting. Uh, the, the, the one thing that perplexed Putin has been the thing that uh, has perplexed me all along. I'm asked all the time, why does Germany go along with all of this? Destroy Germany's economy. Uh, it uh, is absolutely not in Europe's interest. Why does Schultz go along with this? Uh, and this is the one answer where President Putin says, I don't know. I can't figure it out. So I was happy he said that because I can't figure it out either. Uh, and I, I, I'm saying the same thing to the European leaders. I know many of them. What are you doing? It's been years that I've been saying this is a complete dead end for Europe. It's absolutely makes no sense for Europe not to engage directly with Russia. This was the idea, by the way, of uh, you know the nearly defunct OSCE, uh, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, something I like, which makes sense. It's a kind of European multilateral security framework, uh, nearly dead because, of course, the U.S. tried to kill it by putting NATO as the only story. But the Europeans and, and, uh, and Russia should be absolutely discussing normally. Now, what's interesting, of course, is more and more European governments are coming around to that view. So it's it, it's not Viktor Orban alone, uh, Slovakia, Hungary, probably the Netherlands soon. And I think others will come to this conclusion as well. So it's slow, it's uh, frustrating, but I think uh, the tide is turning and I think the interview will have really a significant effect because People will watch it. They're going to have to watch it. They're going to have to go back to it. They're going to have to read it. They're going to have to confront actual ideas, statements, and the clear openness of President Putin and Russia in general to negotiate, which has been absolutely clear 2008, 2013, 2021, 2022. For anyone that has followed this story, there have been ample opportunities to uh, resolve these crises through actual diplomacy. Everyone's been turned down by the U.S. because the U.S. gambled that diplomacy wasn't needed. And that's uh, basically the story that President Putin says. And I think he told it very accurately. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. I still believe that you're the last optimist of this world. I'm an yes. optimist. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to be proved right one of these days. You're right so far, but I'm going to be proved I right hope one so. of these days. I'll keep my okay. fingers crossed for that. Very Thank good. you so I'm, much, uh, I'm, I'm waiting to say I told you so. <laughs>